I've prepared this uh, presentation in English, mais évidemment, vous pouvez après uh, poser vos questions dans toutes les langues que vous voulez. Allemand, italien et français, et espagnol aussi. <laughs> uh, the issue is, and uh, Rosita told it quite well, it's, uh, what I'm doing here is a commercial ad on our NCCR on the move. You will see some uh, uh, new perspectives we have produced. And I will present you also the NCCR, basically also with the invitation to go into the website and see what we are producing and uh, profit also from the knowledge we have we have, and we will continue to create. Uh, what is uh, the content of my short talk will be on the introdu a short introduction on the transforming. I think that uh, uh, Professor De Haas was completely well. We are confronted with a transformation of a, with a, an economic and social transformation which has larger impacts on our uh, life chances and also on, on uh, other phenomena like uh, migration. For a reason, we can't understand migration without uh, going into the uh, aspect of social transformations and economic transformations we are confronted with. Then I will show you some insights how we frame uh, migration and mobility within our NCCR, and I will make a short presentation of available researches which you can find on the web uh, on our platform. So, the introduction. And I like very much uh, Professor De Haas' uh, reference to Michael Pior. Uh, Michael Pior and Charles Sable were, for me, one of the greatest uh, industrial economists and industrial sociologists in order to understand the transformations of the recent past. And what they wrote on their second industrial divide, a marvelous book on how uh, the economic production changed in the last 40 years, what they invented or created were the terms of flexible specialization, which is a new way to produce, which is not linked anymore to mass production, which you had uh, modern times, Charlie, Charles, Charles Chaplin's movies, you see how the machines were working, the Ford company, which has basically created the assembly lines, uh, but you have a new form of production which is addressing specialized knowledge, addressing specialized targets, specialized audiences, specialized also consumers, which are important. And that's the big change we went through since the 70s. And this has also had impacts um, with regard to the whole uh, economic transformation within the industrial world. And as uh, Professor De Haas said, these sort of transformations have also an impact on the way how migration is, uh, uh, is uh, framed thereafter. But we had also, in, since the 90s, uh, the single market project, the fact that uh, migration should be facilitated within the European Union so that uh, people can move without any restriction. And this obviously took immediately to a dual migration regime. There were those who are, have privileges because they are able to move. And then there have obviously those third country nationals to, to a large extent, which are not enabled to move or not in that extent and only if they have the necessary qualifications for the, for the production schemes within the single market. So you have an externalization of the border regimes, basically, to, uh, towards all the countries and all the areas which are not the European Union. And what we also are observing is more and more, and this is also due to terrorism, terrorist attacks in different uh, European cities, but also in the US, we have a securitization, the uh, logics of security, securitizing our borders, but also, and this is uh, another speciality within our NCCR, we have attitudes which are increasingly becoming anti-immigrant, and there are also movements which are creating their political capital on mobilizing against the presence of immigra immigrants to our, in our societies. So we have in Western European, not only Western, also Central European states, you have contradicting logics on one side, you have the freedom of movement for those who are within, but also for those country nationals who have uh, the credentials to move within the European Union. 
We have obviously since uh, 45 a human rights discourse with uh, different uh, provisions in order to protect people who are refugees. But we have also, and this is uh, also mentioned with uh, uh, 9 2, uh, the 9th of February 2014, the Swiss exit basically from the bilateral agreements. We have also the Brexit, and we had now also the election of Trump, which is also indicating. Um, a, a protest towards a too large dynamic change of our societies, uh, need or the formulation of a need for protection for those who are the natives, which is not new. This is not a, if you are going into Swiss history, but I would say even if uh, in European history and even in the history of the United States and Canada, you will always find, always find nativist movements who were, even if North America was a continent of immigration, always addressed against a social change coming through immigrants. So the NCSR on the move short, uh, a short description started in 2014. We have 17 research projects uh, which are coming from legal, social sciences, uh, and, and also the economics, obviously, which is also, in my view, part of social sciences. We have 60 collaborators all over Switzerland. We have different universities which are part of the 17.2 million project from, funded by the Swiss government. Uh, we have here an office, obviously, and directors which are uh, looking at the whole management of the project is advancing. So what is uh, the creation of a mobility paradigm for Switzerland? What does it mean? The, obviously, Switzerland is an old country of immigration, which knows larger parts of uh, a move towards uh, the industrial schemes of this country since the last third of the 19th century. And it had already around 13, 14% of immigrants just on the wake of World War I. And uh, it was also already in the 19th century that uh, the issue of liberal or liberalized movements and the protection of internal labor force was heavily debated. So it's nothing new uh, on, this, on the Swiss front. But obviously what is new, or which ha what has been regained in 2002, were the liberal schemes of the 19th century. That liberal, the liberals of the 19th century have basically uh, created through bilateral and multilateral agreements an area of free circulation. And this was interrupted with World War I and has been recreated in 2002 with the signature for the free movement agreement uh, linking Switzerland to the European Union and put into question after the, uh, after the voting of the 9th of February of 2014. So basically what we uh, are saying in our NCCR is that there has been an old sort of managing migration which were basically state regulated obviously also with a strong impact or with a strong ear towards the interests of the economy, towards a, a mobility regime which is mainly legal and market-led. So in order to understand if this hypothesis, this uh, basic hypothesis is true, we went into uh, a model, we were modelizing this whole thing and you see here the tensions we have uh, the state which is moderating between supranational regimes, which are basically the European Union, which are also uh, WTO um, or, um, frames in order to organize the migration, the mobility of certain people, of, of uh, intra-corporate uh, transferees, but also other international regimes which are protecting the UN, for example, protecting uh, the Geneva Convention, protecting people who are moving. Then we have markets, the need for labor, which are important. And then obviously we have on the other end of this triangle, the society, which uh, is not always welcoming. You have a strong divide within our Western societies uh, on pro-immigrant groups and on anti-immigrant groups. And there's a beautiful um, article written in the International Migration Review in 95 by, now the author is escaping me, uh, Gary Freeman, by Gary Freeman, marvelous article, 95, which is basically giving the answer why 
there are always strong groups against uh, immigration, that the majority of the population is always addressing against immigration, but ne nevertheless they never succeed because uh, the focused interests of state and economic, economic actors are stronger and basically are more able to uh, impose immigration in industrialized countries. And this was basically the frame we wanted to, to see and to check if this is also true for Switzerland. Why Switzerland, therefore? Because, I mentioned it already before, Switzerland has a long history of immigration. Switzerland has also a long history of regulating migration since 1931 uh, with the uh, law on the establishment of, uh, of immigrants to, in the Swiss territory. And it has also a long debate on, on, on the presence of immigrants to this country. Uh, I mean, I, there were heavily anti-immigrant debates already in the 20s. There were the debates of Schwarzenbach in the 60s, uh, late 60s and early 70s. And obviously, since the 90s, with the reawakening and revitalization of anti-populist uh, radical groups, you have a rejuvenization of, uh, of uh, anti-immigrant discourses. And you have also a country with, which is advanced, industrialized, post-industrial, linked to many places in the world, which has to deal with different interests, international interests, at the same time. So what are the recent studies? What I show you is basically, this is uh, one of our working papers you can download, is um, um, the access we have to Swiss statistics in the creation of longitudinal data, which makes it possible to um, follow uh, all groups with their uh, security number, with their personal security number from 98 to our days. And for the Swiss, it's only possible from 2010 to our days. This is a legally protected scheme, which allows us basically to see what happens with, over time with people who are entering Swiss territory. And these are, in French, the different registers. This means we, this data is created through the linkage of different register data, which uh, are already there, and with the new AVS number, are now possible to link, to be linked. And there is obviously enough protection, and we battled for two years in order to get uh, the access to this data, in order to have all the securities checks uh, going through in order to make the links. What is possible to understand with this new data? I'll give you only three slides. This one is not really something new. You know it already. There has been a transformation of the Swiss, um, of the Swiss economy, and for that reason also a larger need for highly qualified personnel. And you see that the immigrants reacted in the last 20 years to this demand. And this means also that, in particular, the, uh, uh, the mobile people from the European Union and the EFTA have more and more higher qualifications coming to Switzerland, but this is also true for those coming from other areas. What you probably do not know, what we know, and in Swiss debate is always uh, said, is that we have a large, uh, we have 24, 25% of immigrants as a stock in this country. What we do not know are the internal circulations of people coming. What you see here are pictures from Germans, French, Austrians, Portuguese, Italians, and Spains, Spaniards. What you see are basically those, all those people from these countries coming in the year 2000 to Switzerland. And what you can see, this has been produced by Philipp Wanner and his team from Geneva, demographic lab, you see that from the Germans, after 13 years, only 50% of those entering the country are still in the country. The rest has moved on, going back or going to other destinations. The French and the Austrians have more or less uh, similar uh, numbers. What you see as, uh, this is also true for Italians and basically stronger true for Spaniards who only 37% are still in Switzerland. The rest has gone back or gone to other places. What you see, nevertheless, are the Portuguese. Portuguese stay to a larger extent in the country. Three quarter of those entering uh, Switzerland in the year 2000 are still in 2013 in Switzerland. 
can check why is this possible, what are the reasons, and I give it to your fantasy. I would say it's uh, also the social economic profile of this, of this immigrant group, and basically also the reasons why they entered the country. But we can discuss this afterwards. Here, with the uh, free movement agreement, we, you can see the numbers between, uh, these are the old numbers I showed you, and these are those entering 2005 from Germany. Those entering 2005 into Switzerland, only 20% are still in the country. The rest moved away. It's not like this for the Portuguese. Here, uh, two-thirds are still in the country. But it's uh, very well the case for US citizens. If you see all US citizens, obviously the number are not large, but all US citizens coming into Switzerland, only 4% are still in the country after eight years. And this is also true, this is less true obviously because they came for different reasons from people from Sri Lanka. So I would say this is a, this is a new knowledge and on basis of this registered data we will be able to follow the people much more closer, also seeing what they did when it came to integration, what they did when it came to uh, salaries, to labor market integration, what they did when uh, they became, when they came in as asylum seekers, uh, what happened when they got ill. So we have now a basis, a databases, in, which allows us to go very deep in the analysis of the population in Switzerland, like the Nordic countries. This is something which the Nordic countries have had several, since several decades, and for that reason, they have a quite well-informed social policy which is addressing real issues coming from their research. What we have also in our, um, in our production are um, legal knowledge, basically, which is here quite a, uh, some, uh, it's here a production which is basically confirming what was said also by Professor de Haas, that we had a transformation of the legal scheme. This is uh, the European Commission in 2002, which wanted to have much more adaptable labor force, and for that reason, the removing of barriers was a, a major, major tool. This is not only true for European citizens, but also for privileged third country nationals. So what we have is basically within the European uh, framework of thinking legally, the European Union uh, sort of uh, targeting economic liberalization and enhancing the virtues of mobility. This is addressing basically a family, students, trainees, volunteers, highly skilled, seasonal workers, and those who are moving as expats within uh, corporations. What we have, uh, this is a study done here in Lausanne within our NCCR framework. It's uh, about uh, discrimination. I think a larger extent, to a larger extent it will be presented in, with her own research by Rosita Phoebe this afternoon. What we had is here uh, data coming from NCCR lives, but also from a survey the three authors were producing. And what is the, uh, they, were want, they wanted to know the employability of Africans, people coming from the former areas of Yugoslavia and the Portuguese. And uh, it's not a big surprise that the uh, duration of unemployment is higher for Africans and ex-Yugoslav and much lower for Portuguese in Switzerland. And this is basically due to perception frames, according to the authors, which uh, uh, look at skin, uh, skin color, but also on religious affiliations, and uh, which are triggering basically negative feelings and which are not so for Italians and Portuguese. And this uh, gives me the opportunity to go to another study, which you will find on our website. Uh, if you uh, click on Elena Vidal Coso, which is also uh, working in Geneva at the demo, the demographic lab, and she linked uh, census data from 1918 with the recent uh, structural survey in order to see to which degrees people coming from southern Europe, particularly from Spain and Italy, how they did at that time in the 1980s, but also now. What changed? 
with people coming from these two countries. What do you think? What changed? Qu'est-ce qui a changé? Même nationalité, n'est-ce pas? Est-ce que c'est la même chose? So can go home now. It's uh, it's basically um, these were these were the data of the 1980s. What you see here is that they were basically coming uh, for lower jobs, for manual jobs, for hard body jobs, for hard working jobs, and were for that reason represented or overrepresented among the lower strata of uh, the occupational uh, structure of, within Switzerland. And you have to look at the last section, which says, and this was also true for those independently of their education, because the education was not important to a certain extent. It was the occupational role which was important uh, to address. For that reason, you came here for certain jobs, and it was much more difficult to change that jobs, because the, there was not space for that, and this was also regulated by law. They were younger, obviously, and less likely to be married. And this means, obviously, that those who are coming here are not coming in their 20s, but in their 30s and 40s. They have a tertiary education uh, to a large extent. More than 50% are, have a university degree coming into Switzerland. And for that reason, they high, go up in their educational and occupational, in particular, attainment. And uh, joint the collective or highly skilled foreign workers and be basically the same positions as, uh, as many other immigrants with the same qualifications into Switzerland. So, what can you expect in the next time looking at our website? What we are producing and which will be published uh, in the beginning of next year is an is a indicator, series of indicators which are showing movements, but also other sorts of uh, uh, flux control uh, with, uh, into Switzerland. What we will produce is a survey which will produce new data on the integration of people, then coming from different countries within the mobility scheme into Switzerland. What we are also doing quite heavily are roundtables in order to discuss with practitioners and with academics and students issues like, for example, d'institut provisoire un statut durable, l'intégration des personnes relevant du domaine de l'asile, with different authors which have produced knowledge on this issue. And this is something which will happen the 12th of December in Stade de Suisse in Bern, in order to have an exchange with those who are close to issues of migration. And next week we will have a with uh, Michel Yeborka, Keith Penting, which is a social policy um, fellow uh, at Queen's University of Canada, with Irene Blumrad, also Canadian at Berkeley on citizenship, and Roxanne Maxwell on, um, on the issues of uh, cultural anthropologist. Uh, um, a public lecture on two days, starting Thursday evening, and the whole Friday on the social transformation, the link between migration, mobility, and uh, the other issues which are important in understanding, for understanding our new and modern societies. That's it. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you.